we are talking about equilibrium in the long run look at this diagram we have two parts of this diagram in the first part where initial equilibrium in which y is greater than y n y n is the natural rate of output and look at here when initial equilibrium in which y is less than y n this is the equilibrium in the long run actually when we find the equilibrium at which the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied there is no need for additional discussion but in aggregate supply and aggregate demand analysis this is not the case even when the quantity of aggregate output demanded equals the quantity supplied forces operate that can cause the equilibrium to move over time we must remember that if cost of production change the aggregate supply curve will shift for example as you know that the most important component of production cost is known as wages wages are covering approximately 70 percent of production costs and you know that wages of laborers are determined in the labor market if the economy is booming employers will find that they have difficulty hiring qualified workers and may even have a hard time keeping their present employees if the economy is booming employers will find that they have difficulty hiring qualified workers so if employers want to hire more workers they will face difficulty in hiring qualified workers during this booming situation and even have a hard time keeping their present employees because the present employees will also want to go to another work if they are getting more wages so the workers will decide that we must go somewhere else to get more money so in this case the labor market is tight why because the demand for labor exceeds the supply of labor what employers will do employers will raise wages to attract needed workers and this raise the cost of production so what will happen it means that an increase in wages of laborers will raise the cost of production the higher cost of production lowers the profit per unit of output at each price level and the aggregate supply curve shift to the left side but on the other hand suppose if the economy enters a recession now look at here when corona is all around the world so it means that the global economies are in a recessionary positions they are facing recessions so look at the job markets people are unemployed they are sitting in their homes so in these situations laborers are not hiring laborers and also if some companies or some organizations are hiring they will pay you lower wages because they are thinking that people have no job if they are thinking that people have no job it means that the workers will accept lower wages and similarly the workers will not lose their jobs to go somewhere else because of the bad economic conditions or because of the bad uh, market conditions so if the economy enters a recession so the labor market is slack because demand for labor is less than supply workers who cannot find jobs will be willing to work for lower wages because people have no jobs so in current situations they want to work they want to work in different organization by accepting lower wages similarly employed workers those workers who are already working somewhere else so employed workers may be willing to make a wage concession to keep from losing their jobs they don't want to lose their jobs so they will compensate on lower wages 
Therefore, in a slick market in which the quantity of labor demanded is less than the quantity of labor supplied, wages and hence cost of production will fall. It means that profits per unit of output will rise and the aggregate supply curve will shift to the right. Our analysis suggests that the aggregate supply curve will shift depending on whether the labor market is tight or slack. How do we decide that the labor market is in a boom situation? Or how do we decide that the labor market is slack? What is the guideline? The natural rate of unemployment is a helpful concept which will guide us about the labor market situation. The question is, what do we mean by natural rate of unemployment? Simply, the natural rate of unemployment represents the rate of unemployment to which the economy gravitates in the long run, at which demand for labor equals supply. And many economists believe that the natural rate of unemployment is currently around 5%. Suppose if the natural rate of unemployment is 5%. Now, look at case 1. Look at case 1. When unemployment is, say, 4%, which is below the natural rate of unemployment, so we can say that 4% is less than 5%. Or the economy unemployment rate is less than the natural rate of unemployment so the labor market is tight this is a guideline keep this point in mind that if the unemployment rate is less than the natural rate of unemployment we can say that the labor market is tight so if the labor market is tight you know that wages will rise and the aggregate supply curve will shift leftward. Now, on the other hand, for example, the economy unemployment rate is 8%, and the natural rate of unemployment is 5%. So we can say that 8% is greater than 5%, or we can say that the economy unemployment rate is greater than the natural rate of unemployment. So in such in this situation, we can say that the, la the labor market is slack. So when the labor market is slack, as you know that wages will fall and the aggregate supply curve will shift rightward. Only when unemployment is at the natural rate, when no pressure exists from the labor market for wages to rise or fall. So the aggregate supply need not shift. It means that when unemployment rate is at the natural rate, for example, if the unemployment rate is 5% and the natural rate of unemployment is also 5%, it means that if both are equal, so there is no pressure exists from, for, from the labor market for wages to rise are far. It means there is no pressure on the economy and the aggregate supply curve need not shift. So the aggregate supply curve will remain constant. There is no reason to shift the aggregate demand curve to the, uh, the aggregate supply curve to the right or to the left. But keep one point in mind that the level of aggregate output produced at the natural rate of unemployment is called the natural rate level of output or the natural output level. For example, the economy is at the natural rate of unemployment and the economy is producing a certain amount of output at that position. That is known as the natural rate of output. So simply we can say that the level of aggregate output produced at the natural rate of unemployment is known as the natural rate level of output or the natural output level. So aggregate supply curve will not remain stationary. 
when unemployment and aggregate output differs from their natural level. Keep this point in mind that the aggregate supply curve will not remain stationary. Now look at this figure. We have two panels, panel A and panel B. First, look at panel A. In this panel, the initial equilibrium occurs at point A, where aggregate demand curve touches aggregate supply curve A is one at point A. We have P1, the aggregate price level, and Y1, the aggregate output level. At this equilibrium point, the intersection of the aggregate demand curve and the initial aggregate supply curve is A1. So AD is equal to AS1. Because the level of equilibrium output Y1 is greater than the natural rate level Yn. Actually, the green line represents the natural rate of output denoted by Yn. We can say that the aggregate output is above the natural rate of output or we can say that y1 is greater than yn unemployment is less than the natural rate and excess tightness exists in the labor market so what will happen this tightness drives wages up if wages increase it will raise the production cost and shifts the aggregate supply curve to the left so we will move from A is 1 to A is 2. And now we are here at point 2, where we have P2 price and Y2, because the price level will increase in the market. Why? Because the aggregate supply is now lesser than the previous case. But now, as you know that aggregate output Y is 2, is still above the natural output level. Look at, now we are producing at Y2, but this Y2 is above Yn. I mean to say that this aggregate output level is above the natural output level. So wages continue to be driven up. Wages will rise again, eventually shifting the aggregate supply curve to A is 3. So we will move from point two to point three and the aggregate supply curve will shift from A is two to A is three. So we are now heading towards the aggregate, the natural output level. Actually, the equilibrium reached at point three is on the vertical line at Yn and is a long run equilibrium. Because output is at the natural rate level, there is no further pressure on wages to rise and thus no further tendency for the aggregate supply curve to shift. You can see the moment from point one to point two and then from point two to point three and panel A. The moment, the moments indicated the economy will not remain at a level of output higher than the natural rate level because the aggregate supply curve will shift to the left, raise the price level and cause the economy to slide upward along the demand curve. Actually, the economy is sliding upward along the aggregate demand curve until it comes to this a point on the vertical line through the natural rate level of output. Because now the vertical line through Yn is the only place at which the aggregate supply curve comes to rest. This vertical line indicates the quantity of output supplied in the long run for any given price level. We can characterize this as the long run aggregate supply curve. And now there is no pressure on the economy. To change the price level. Now look at panel B. In panel B the output level is below the natural level of output. In panel B as you see that Y1 is less than Yn and we are initially at point 1 
where we have y1 level of aggregate output and p1 price level so the aggregate supply curve keeps shifting to the right until output is again returned to y n it means that we will move from point one to point two and then from point two to point three so you can see that the aggregate supply curve is shifting to the right side from a is one to a is two and then finally from a is two to a is three so the aggregate supply curve keeps shifting to the right until output is again returned to y n hence in both cases the economy displays a self-correcting mechanism that returns into the natural rate level of output look at here and panel b where y is less than y n this y1 is less than y1 and similarly y2 is less than y n so wages will decrease at given price profits increase and y produce output mean output will increase so aggregate supply curve shipped out until y is equal to y n at the long run aggregate supply curve so it means that when wages are decreasing it means profits of business firms are increasing they will produce more that's why the aggregate demand curve will shift from the original position to the left side this shift will continue until y is equal to y n economy output is equal to natural rate of output look at here point three at point three we have p3 which is the aggregate price level and y n is the equilibrium output level an important issue for policy makers is how rapidly a self-correcting mechanism works so many economists particularly keynes keynesians believe that the self-correcting mechanism takes a long time so the approach to the long run equilibrium is slow j m keynes says that in the long run we are all dead these economists view the self-correcting mechanism as slow why because wages are inflexible in the labor market particularly in the downward direction when unemployment is high so the resulting slow wage and price adjustment means that the aggregate supply curve does not move quickly to restore the economy to the natural rate of unemployment hence when unemployment is high, these economists are more likely to see the need for active government policy to restore the economy to full employment. And these economists are known as activists. Now, let me talk about the non-activists. The monetarists are the monetary school of thought are known as non-activists. So other economists, for example, monetarists, believe that wages are sufficiently flexible, that the wage and price adjustment process is reasonably rapid. As a result of this flexibility, adjustment of the aggregate supply curve to the long run position and to the economy return to the natural rate of output and unemployment will occur quickly. These economists see much less need for the active policy so simply monetarists advocate the use of a rule whereby the money supply or the monetary base grows at a constant rate so as to minimize fluctuations in the aggregate demand that might lead to output fluctuations